Isn't that just beautiful? I mean, it's fascinating how the industry makes these drinks so beautiful. The colors are so pretty and the head on the beer as it rises, all the bubbles and the champagne and so forth. But if you've watched Know the Cause for any period of time, you know a couple of things. I returned home from Vietnam in 1970 and at that time, or 1971, we hadn't defined post-traumatic stress syndrome. So what did I do? I didn't take Valium and a bunch of pills. Uh, I drank. And it seemed to calm the savage beast inside my brain for a period of time. All my friends did when we got home. And that was kind of our excuse. Well, we're under a lot of stress. We drink a lot of alcohol. Today, we're going to define this as the mycotoxin that it is. And we're going to figure out what our liver is supposed to do. Kyle's going to be here. Daniel's going to be here. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we call moderate consumption. Even the American Cancer Society says it's okay to consume alcohol moderately. Define that, please. Don't go away. This is a great show we have lined up for you. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you, too, will know the cause. Many years ago, I had a radio show, and I'll never forget, it was live call-in. It started 30 minutes here in Dallas, and then it was syndicated, so some of you may have heard it. It was called Your Health with Doug Kaufman. Um, one day, a doctor called in, a Saturday, a doctor called in. He said, I want to challenge you. You contend that what we're eating causes symptoms. I don't think that's true, because we all eat and we're not all sick. Pretty good thinking. You know, how are you going to counter that one? I said, okay, doc, let me go here with you. Bring in to the radio station... I'll interview you, bring in a six pack and start drinking it and see if within three or four beers, you're the same guy you are now. We can in fact induce symptoms and diseases with food. Eat poison. Folks, there are many of us who suffer with problems with food, right? And it isn't just potato and meat and so forth. One of the most serious complications we have with food happens to be alcohol. And I've got to tell you, for many people, it's very, very tough to quit. It makes it tougher when the medical associations, plural, associations, say, no, alcohol's okay. Now, understand this, folks. I, I have a visual for you that I want you to see. Understand where the American Diabetes, American Cancer, American Heart Association is on this issue. And you'll understand why that doctor called me Saturday morning and said, food doesn't affect it. That's really the, the uh, emphasis that medicine puts on things. We don't know how you got sick, but take this pill, right? Erase the symptom for a period of time. We're masters at that, but understanding the cause, we don't. Certain fungi make poisonous substances even inside our body. Uh, for example, penicillium, the mold, makes a mycotoxin, a byproduct, called penicillin. Yep, and we swallow it. Thank God it kills little tiny bacteria in our body. Brewer's yeast, the fungus, makes a secondary byproduct, a mycotoxin called alcohol. So you would think that the stance from the Heart Association, the Cancer Association, the Diabetes Association would be, well, we shouldn't be touching that at all. But in fact, you'd be wrong. What they actually say is for men, moderate drinking seems to be okay. And then they define moderate drinking. Two beers a day. And for women, they say, well, women are a little smaller stature than men, so five ounces of wine a night is probably okay. So I did the math, and if this was a regular wine bottle, what they're actually saying is, women, you can have six to seven of these a month, and it won't cause any health problems, because that's moderate alcohol intake. Men, I got some really good news for you. How much do you weigh? I'm probably 175. They say, are you ready for this? <clears throat> oh, 43 pounds. They say five gallons of beer and a little bit more and another half gallon is okay every month for us to consume. I can't imagine at my age consuming this much alcohol, 43 pounds of alcohol 
add the half gallon, you got 45, 46 pounds of alcohol a month. Do the math on that through the years. Folks, we're not hearing the whole truth from inside the halls of science. Let me tell you what the whole truth is. We have different groupings of what we know are cancer-causing and what we suspect are cancer-causing. Things like arsenic, things like other poisons, things like radiation and so forth are, are all in the category one. Those we know cause cancer. Aflatoxin, the mycotoxin of aspergillus is known to cause cancer and yet it grows in our corn supply, our wheat supply, peanuts sometimes. So think about that, folks, because what they're saying is it's okay to drink 43 pounds of alcohol a month if you're a man. It's not okay. In the category one heading from the American Cancer, it says alcoholic beverages are known carcinogens. Why in the world, unless there was something in it for you, would you recommend drinking this much beer a month or six or seven bottles of wine a month? Come to our senses, folks. If the doctors want to do that, God bless them. Let, him, let them go ahead and do it. But I think we need to rethink this. I think for good health, we need to stay away from cigarettes, mycotoxins, and we need to stay away from alcohol. A little bit in moderation, I'm sure, is okay. It's when we drink what they're recommending as being moderate that I question. I don't go away. I don't want to come. Many have asked, what would you take if you could only take one supplement? My answer, if the great physician created one-fifth of our bodies as immune cells to protect us from what seeks to harm us, then we should first support our immune soldiers so they can perform as our maker intended. That immune supplement support for me is NSC Immunition Glucan in either NSC 24 Original or NSC 100 Extra Strength. U.S. Medical School research continues uninterrupted after 15 years on NSC MG Glucan. That provides you an ever-improving immune system normalizer. For my family, myself, and you, only the best is good enough, and that is NSC Immunition Beta Glucan. Join me and let your better tomorrow begin today with NSC Immunition Beta Glucan. It works. As we were shooting this segment with Kyle, I thought, I've known this guy 15 years and I never once have seen him hold a beer in his hand. Watch this. This is beer. It's time to make everybody upset with me because I'm talking about beer today and fungus. You know, being able to see right through a glass of beer is a desirable quality among beer makers. And the reason is because the way that it looks has a lot to do with the satisfaction people have in drinking it. Now, we all know why alcohol isn't on the phase one diet. We know that it's fermented, and we know that the alcohol itself is a mycotoxin. When you drink a little bit and you get that buzz, that is a mycotoxin at work. The thing, though, about the clarity of beer is something we've never really talked about. Did you know that the clarity of beer is tied to the yeast itself? The yeast clumps together, and it causes the beer to be transparent. If the yeast didn't clump together, it'd be cloudy, and it wouldn't be very appealing at all. But when I read this study from the Whitehead Institute for Biomedical Research, I thought, oh no, people are going to hate me when I bring this up because the clarity in beer is also tied to the ability of fungus to clump together. And it says here that researchers from Whitehead Institute said that the immune cells in the body are completely oblivious to fungus when they enter your body as long as they're clumped together. In other words, the clumping action hides the immune system from seeing it. So the thing that makes it very clear for beer is what makes it utterly unclear for your immune system. So when we drink beer and we're drinking this clumpy, clumpy, fungus, yeasty stuff, we're actually getting the most pathogenic or disease-causing form of yeast available. I'm sorry, but when it comes to deciding whether or not to have one of these, think fungus until proven otherwise.
Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, author of The 24-Hour Pharmacist, and I only recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. You see, most probiotic products contain billions of freeze-dried bacteria, but that can aggravate bloating and gas. Dr. O'Hara's provides only live, beneficial bacteria, plus their prebiotic nutrition. It supports noticeable digestive comfort. I believe in Dr. O'Hara's consistent results. It takes guts to feel great. Which of my books fits you? Can you cook your way to wellness? Can you eat your way to wellness? That's the name of a couple of books I've written, Cooking Your Way to Good Health or Eating Your Way to Good Health, loaded with recipes. Whether you want to follow the phase one diet or the phase two diet, please your families with good tasting foods all put together in these two great recipe books. What in the world? It's so beautiful. What in the world is it? How do they make alcohol? A lot of us have studied this for a period of time. Daniel, I know, is relatively new at this, but even he knows. Watch this. Hello, everybody. This is Daniel Crouch with your Lifestyle Moment on Know the Cost. Today, we're going to talk about alcohol, and we're going to give a, an unbiased, just very factual uh, lesson on alcohol. And let's begin with how alcohol is made. Well, basically, you take yeast, and then you take an energy source such as a sugar or a starch or something else like that. You know, you've got potatoes that turn into vodka, and you've got you know grapes that turn into wine. But basically, you take a yeast, and what you're doing is you are basically uh, you're basically allowing that thing to to die, and then you're getting the the alcohol is is the death of that fruit or of that starch. So, you know. Is if you're familiar with the show, which I know everybody here is, you know, we're not big fans of yeast, we're not big fans of sugar, so those two things don't always go together, and they're certainly not allowed on the phase one and phase two. But something else I want to talk about, you know, further on down the line is that alcohol will dehydrate you, and over a long period of time, risks for cancer uh, and osteoporosis increase. So things to think about, you know, obviously we're not judgmental at all, and alcohol, you know, it, it can be enjoyed in moderation, but when you start to transition over into uh, anything more than moderation, that is when you need to consider the negative impact that it can have on you and on your health. So think about that the next time you go and have a glass of wine, and maybe you need it and maybe you don't. But either way, now you know the facts. Thank you, as always, for joining me on the lifestyle segment of Know the Cause. You know, when I wound down my drinking many years ago, a friend of mine hadn't, and I approached that one day and said, look, I, I really want you to consider stopping drinking totally. I'm concerned about your liver. My liver, he questioned. There's nothing wrong with my liver. Why, it's as hard as a rock. It's that kind of thing that really made me begin realizing we men don't know much about this. We drink it to satisfy ourselves for a period of time, but we don't really know it has to filter through the liver. What in the world does the liver do? Dr. Fogel of Life Extension explained it very well. Why is our liver so important? What gets done there? This is something that few people realize is when you eat food, it's loaded with viruses, bacteria, fungus, pesticides, chemicals, heavy metals. What happens is all the blood that's absorbing everything, it doesn't just go right into circulation. There's this wonderful thing called the hepatic portal system. Now I know it sounds like a big word, but this is all that it means. It means it takes all that stuff that's being absorbed from your intestines and it portals it, shoots it right up to the liver first. Before it goes anywhere else, the liver gets to take a look at it. And what the liver does is it's magical, Doug. It's magical because they've done studies where they looked at the blood that you just absorbed from your meal, has all those viruses, bacteria, chemicals in it. But they check the blood on the other side of the liver after it comes out, guess what? It's all clean. Because yeah. that's what the liver does. It cleans all that. It's just like the most magical purification, filtration system that you have. And if it's not working right, guess what happens? All that stuff then ends up circulating in you. Thank you, Dr. Fogel. You know, it's kind of like those old air purification systems, the liver is, but on those, you pull the filter out. You can't pull a filter out of our liver, right? So we keep dumping alcohol into the liver, and at some time it's going to say, whoa, stop. Too many mycotoxins. You know, cirrhosis of the liver is a mycotoxin disease. You'll never hear that, 
but it is a mycotoxin disease. Let's study this because I pulled this off the internet. Alcoholic beverages are classified by the IARC, we'll talk about that in a minute, as group one carcinogens. Classifies alcoholic beverage consumption as the cause of female breast, colorectal, larynx, liver, esophageal, and oral cavity and pharynx cancers, and a probable cause of pancreatic cancer. Guys, we, we, I'm not here to shake my finger and condemn, right? I've made my decision. I hope you make yours. Let's just learn a little bit about cancer, and there's that IARC I was just talking about. It's the International Agency for Research on Cancer. It categorizes possible carcinogens, right? And there's four categories. Group one is, yep, this causes cancer. Group two is, well, it might. We aren't quite sure. Group three is unclassifiable as to cancer-causing potential. And group four, probably not cancer-causing to humans. Okay, so there's, there's actually five, but I didn't go into one of the subclasses. But when, when we look at things like mold, we know aflatoxins, they're category one. What else is category one? And this comes from the World Health Organization, right? Group one are known carcinogenic agents, acetaldehyde from consuming alcoholic beverages. As a matter of fact, uh, that is produced by the liver as it breaks down ethanol. Group one, folks, there are three categories that this group gave to alcohol. One is what they call the drunk mycotoxin. It may well be that, says a research paper that acid aldehyde. Number two is alcoholic beverages, like we showed you at the beginning of the show. And number three is called ethanol, it's also called alcohol. So there's an exclamation point written, these are category one, these aren't thought to cause cancer. These are known to cause cancer. Now that doesn't mean I can drink this pretty blue thing and get cancer. If there were that cause and effect relationship, you know, then everybody would stop drinking alcohol. It's over a long period of time. The American Cancer Society says research shows that alcohol consumption is linked to increased chance of developing certain cancers, and I read those to you. The more alcohol a person consumes, the higher their risk of developing some kind of cancer. So what do they recommend? As part of its, dietary, or its guidelines on nutrition and physical activity for cancer prevention, the American Cancer Society recommends that people who drink alcohol limit their intake to no more than two drinks per day for men and one drink a day for women. We've already done this. Six or seven bottles of wine a month is fine if you're a female. Slightly over five gallons of beer each month is okay if you're a male. <clears throat> Can I tell you, I don't think that's what they had in mind. I, I think this is bizarre that the same organization that says, hey, these are category one known carcinogens. These are mycotoxins. They're known to cause cancer, but to whom and how much must you consume before it leads to that? Nobody knows. I don't think that the American cancer would say they're known to cause cancer, and oh, by the way, five gallons a month seems about normal. What they're trying to do is define what is moderate drinking. A lot of doctors drink moderately, folks, and so they have to define how much is okay. And what they're saying is a lot a month is okay. I don't think so, and especially as we age. Okay, don't go away, still more to come. I think for those people who are very active and don't like to take a lot of pills, uh, the two of them would be perfect for them. This is a multivitamin formula based on the ideal intake of all these wonderful vitamins and minerals that are gonna optimize your health way more than a generic multivitamin will. Take one in the morning, one in the evening, boom, they're done, and it covers you know, a multitude of different uh, things that will help you stay healthy. Order now for the two per day vitamin, one month supply for $8.25. I'm often amazed by some of the stuff my patients tell me that their primary care physicians have told them. Not just bad advice, but often outright dangerous misinformation. This is really sad. In a recent survey conducted by the Council for Responsible Nutrition, it was concluded that more than half of supplement users rely on their doctors for information on what products to use and how to use them. I would say the average physician probably knows about vitamin D, and they may know about fish oil, but that's about it. Unless, of course, they have some 20-year-old producer telling them what to say on set that day, and you know who you are. Unfortunately, most medical schools only give nutrition a passing mention, much less bother to teach about nutritional supplements. 
I've even heard from people whose closed-minded doctors told them, you can't be pa my patient if you continue to use nutritional supplements. Honestly, I don't know what kind of open dialogue you can have with any physician who is this ignorant of nutritional medicine. But unfortunately, they're all over the place, and I bet some of you even go to them. And this, my friends, is a very dangerous situation because supplements are active substances and they can interact with prescription medications and they are powerful and safe health promoters. Find yourself a good nutritionist or physician knowledgeable in this area or one who isn't afraid of doing some research with you. I'm Dr. Fred Pescatori for Know the Cause. Fungal mycotoxins is what Know the Cause is all about. Alcohol happens to be a fungal mycotoxin. What do we do in lieu of alcohol? Are there options? Denny says yes. Watch this. Isn't this the time of year? Salute and drink. You know, so often red wine, Denny, is what the, the beverage of choice is, but phase one, you can't do red wine That's and you can't right. do alcohol at all. So you have come up on page 21 of the new book. Thank That's you right. for that new book. You've come up with some viable alternatives that are tremendous. Yes, um, today we, we're making some ginger ale from mm -hmm. scratch. And this is a this is ginger root. I'm just um, peeling it here. The really easy way to do it is with a spoon rather than with a, because oh, yeah. they've got all those little nooks and crannies. And I've got some over here already simmering um, in a simple syrup that's made with xylitol, which again is phase one friendly. Mm -hmm. And all we're gonna do is put a couple <clears throat> tablespoons in a glass. You can use more if you like it a little stronger or a little less if you've got kids that don't like it quite as strong because ginger is kind of yeah, potent. Yeah. yeah, it is. But but it's sweet too. And if this doesn't taste just like real ginger ale, you I'll know, you. know, Denny, let's, you said it's potent, it's sweet, it's good. Let it's me strong. just uh, tease you a little bit. University of Michigan a few years ago concluded that ginger, I mean this, this stuff, right? This inhibited ovarian cancer cells. They're using it for colon cancer prevention, uh, eases uh, menopausal mm -hmm. symptoms, eases uh, menstruation symptoms. It's an anti-inflammatory, morning sickness. The list just goes on and it's on. Good. Yeah, and, and motion sickness. Motion sickness, yeah. this little thing is amazing. So real ginger ale, what Denny is making here, is therapeutic. That's and tasty. Do you want me to try this? Not yet. Okay. We have one more, and then Darn. you get to choose. Okay, good. This is a grapefruit soda, and it's made with um, organic grapefruit juice, and we're just going to use about equal portions grapefruit juice and, yep. again, some sparkling water. And, again, the grapefruit, the reason it's pink or red is lycopene, right? Guys who have prostates eat a lot of uh, these red uh, fruits and vegetables. Very, very good for you, lycopene. Now, I like it just like this, but if you've got kids that are accustomed to drinking sugar sodas, they might be wanting something a little bit sweeter so you can add a little stevia to it. And there's a certain sparkling beverage that comes in a can that yes. I won't mention, but it sounds, it tastes just like this. Why so. would you do that when you can have this at home, fresh made? Okay. I mean, this is wonderful. Cheers. Cheers. absolutely delicious. It's unbelievable to think you can make it taste that good, and not it, out of a can. And it's healthy. It's healthy. Cheers. Salute. Ginger ale will be ginger ale. We made a little ginger syrup using xylitol, okay. so mm -hmm. it's phase one. And this is a cranberry juice cocktail made with pure, unsweetened cranberry juice, which is really bitter. It is. So you need to sweeten it with something. I used a little stevia, added a little lime juice, and then we're just going to finish them off and make them bubbly and festive. See, I think this is so good to have friends over. You know, fun times without alcohol, without foods that may disrupt their health. You know, this is just, do you have to stir it or can I just down the hatch? It looks pretty mixed, but. Yes. Mm. Is it good? Is it not too, not too mm. tart? It's not good, it's delicious. Okay. I want to try this. I love the ginger ale. I don't really like soda very much, but I love me some ginger ale every <laughs> once in a while. And this is fresh ginger. Danny, so did it's you just say, I you. love me some ginger ale? <laughs> the more I get you out of Texas, out here to Texas, the better it gets. Hey, come on. Mm. Delicious. Toast? Cheers. Mm. Detoxing is a really hot topic these days. I really think everyone needs to detox and food is the perfect way to do it. So what are my three favorite detoxing foods? Number one, lemon and water. 
I love lemon and water, especially first thing in the morning. The lemon just helps to just flush things out as well as the water. And if you're, if you're prone to getting a little puffy in the mornings, it's perfect. Um, greens, greens are filled with chlorophyll, which is very detoxing to the body. And then my last one, garlic. Garlic is an antifungal, which we know on phase one is a potent, um, potent antifungal that we want to get as much of, but it also stimulates the liver and draws toxins out of the liver. So garlic is perfect one. So we've got our lemon water, our greens, and our garlic, my favorite. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, America's Pharmacist. We all love grapefruits, but did you know their seeds have health benefits too? Makers sell supplements of grapefruit seed extract. It's also called GSE for short. It's basically concentrated grapefruit seeds, a little pulp, and some of the white pith of the grapefruit. If you take GSE, you can't help but notice the bitter taste. It's much stronger than an actual grapefruit, but that bitterness is the secret to some surprising health benefits. I personally just pucker up because I think GSE is good for you. It acts like an antibiotic as well as an antifungal and you can take it by mouth or you can apply it to your skin for fungal infections. It seems to reduce the risk of colon cancer too. But I'd be real careful because grapefruits, grapefruit juice, and GSE supplements all interact with dozens of drugs including a common blood thinner called warfarin. So check this out and ask your doctor if eating grapefruits or taking GSE supplements is okay for you. I'll see you next time. Barb and Frank Long of Long Life Unlimited are distributors of one of the best home cleaning degreaser products in the country called Orange TKO with Delimony. Also, they feature many products in the Rafa Remedy line. Try this amazing product on your skin today. They also can serve you with 300 other products, many that are featured on Know the Cause. Ask for the Know the Cause special now by calling the number or logging on to longlifeunlimited.com. Remember, it's God given, people approved, and doctor recommended. It is pretty, isn't it? Wow, it's amazing how beautiful it is. Uh, what does it do inside our bodies? Folks, I, I contend that a drink from time to time. Ruth and I went out with friends a couple of weeks ago and they bought a bottle of wine and we all shared a glass of wine. Then Ruth and I ran home and took chlorophyll caps because chlorophyll absorbs mycotoxins in the body. Uh, it's amazing how paranoid as I age I have become because I threw caution to the wind when I was 22, 23, 24 years old and I drank way too much of this. Other shows we have done on detoxification really apply. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fogel, for teaching us a little bit about the liver and how it should filter. Uh, allow it to do its work, folks. Don't abuse your liver. The good Lord gave us two of everything and one liver. Just be careful. Take home message, especially at holiday time. Be careful out there. Don't overdo it. Enjoy yourselves, but know that this represents a fungal mycotoxin. Good seeing you. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.